Hannibal Barca, he is widely regarded as one of the greatest military commanders in history. Hannibal's father, Hamilcar Barca, was a leading Carthaginian general during the First Punic War. Hannibal occupied most of southern Italy for 15 years. He was betrayed to the Romans and died by suicide with poison. Hannibal is considered one of the greatest military tacticians and generals of antiquity, alongside Philip of Macedon, Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Scipio Africanus and Pyrrhus. Hannibal was a common Semitic Phoenician Carthaginian personal name. It is a combination of the common Phoenician masculine given name Hanno with the northwest Semitic Canaanite deity Baal. Lit. Lord, a major god of the Carthaginians' ancestral homeland of Phoenicia in Western Asia. Although he is by far the most famous Hannibal when further clarification is necessary he is usually referred to as Hannibal, son of Hamilcar, or Hannibal the Barkid, the latter term applying to the family of his father, Hamilcar Barca. Hannibal was one of the sons of Hamilcar Barca, a Carthaginian leader, and an unknown mother. When his father drowned in battle, Hannibal's brother-in-law Hasdrubal the Fair succeeded in his command of the army with Hannibal, then 18 years old, serving as an officer under him. After he assumed command, Hannibal spent two years consolidating his holdings and completing the conquest of Hispania, south of the Ebro. In his first campaign, Hannibal attacked and stormed the Olcade's strongest center, Alithia, which promptly led to their surrender, and brought Punic power close to the river Tagus. Hannibal not only perceived this as a breach of the treaty signed with Hasdrubal, but as he was already planning an attack on Rome, this was his way to start the war. So he laid siege to the city, which fell after eight months. Hannibal sent the booty from Saguntum to Carthage, a shrewd move that gained him much support from the government. Livy records that only Hanno II the Great spoke against him. In Rome, the Senate reacted to this apparent violation of the treaty by dispatching a delegation to Carthage to demand whether Hannibal had destroyed Saguntum in accordance with orders from Carthage. Carthaginian general Hannibal crossed the Pyrenees and Rhone in 218 BC. His army included 38,000 infantry, 8,000 cavalry, and 38 elephants, almost none of which would survive the harsh conditions of the Alps. He left a detachment of 20,000 troops to garrison the newly conquered region of Cisalpine Gaul. Hannibal outmaneuvered the natives who had tried to prevent his crossing, then evaded a Roman force marching from the Mediterranean coast. His exact route over the Alps has been the source of scholarly dispute ever since. The most influential modern theories favor either a march up the valley of the Drome or a crossing of the main range. Polybius wrote that Hannibal had crossed the highest of the Alpine passes between the upper Gill Valley and the upper Po River. Radiocarbon dating secured dates of 2168 BP or circa 218 BC, the year of Hannibal's march. Hannibal's vision of military affairs was derived partly from his Greek tutors and partly from experience gained alongside his father. From the start, he seems to have calculated that he would have to operate without aid from Hispania. The Alpine invasion of Italy was a military operation that would shake the Mediterranean world. Second Punic War in Italy, 218-204 BC. Carthaginian general Hannibal crossed the Pyrenees and Rhone in 218 BC. His army included 38,000 infantry, 8,000 cavalry, and 38 elephants, almost none of which would survive the harsh conditions of the Alps. He left a detachment of 20,000 troops to garrison the newly conquered region of Cisalpine Gaul. Hannibal outmaneuvered the natives who had tried to prevent his crossing, then evaded a Roman force marching from the Mediterranean coast. His exact route over the Alps has been the source of scholarly dispute ever since. The most influential modern theories favor either a march up the valley of the Drome or a crossing of the main range. Polybius wrote that Hannibal had crossed the highest of the Alpine passes between the upper Gill Valley and the upper Po River. Radiocarbon dating secured dates of 2168 BP or circa 218 BC, the year of Hannibal's march. Hannibal's vision of military affairs was derived partly from his Greek tutors and partly from experience gained alongside his father. From the start, he seems to have calculated that he would have to operate without aid from Hispania. The Alpine invasion of Italy was a military operation that would shake the Mediterranean world. Publius Cornelius Scipio was the consul who commanded the Roman force sent to intercept Hannibal. He succeeded in transporting his army to Italy by the sea in time to meet Hannibal. Hannibal's forces moved through the Po Valley and were engaged in the Battle of Ticinus. The victory was minor, but it encouraged the Gauls and Ligurians to join the Carthaginian cause. After Scipio's defeat at Ticinus, the other consular army was rushed to the Po Valley. 
Consul Tiberius Sempronius Longus joined his colleague in his camp near Placentia. Hannibal had an opportunity to show his masterful military skill at the Trivia in December of the same year, after wearing down the superior Roman infantry with a surprise attack from the flanks. The Battle of Lake Trasimene, 217 BC. Hannibal crossed without opposition over both the Apennines and the seemingly impassable Arno. Polybius claims that Hannibal's men marched for four days and three nights, through a land that was underwater. Hannibal's invasion of Etruria was the most costly battle fought by the Romans until the Battle of Carhae. He lured Flaminius into a trap and caught him in a defile on the shore of Lake Trasimenus, killing him as well. Hannibal had his men tie burning torches to a herd of cattle and drive them up the heights. He then managed to move his army in complete silence through the dark lowlands. Fabius himself was within striking distance but his caution worked against him, as he stayed put. The Battle of Cannae was fought between the Romans and Hannibal in 216 BC. Gaius Terentius Varro and Lucius Aemilius Paulus were appointed consuls before the battle. Between 50,000 and 70,000 Romans were killed or captured in the Battle of Cannae. The battle was one of the bloodiest battles in all of human history. Hannibal fought no more major battles in Italy for the rest of his career after this battle. Hannibal's defeat of Cannae in 216 BC led to a series of events in which many parts of Italy joined his cause. However, he chose not to directly attack Rome and instead focused on subduing the fortresses that still held out against him. The Romans used the attritional strategy that Fabius had taught them, which, they finally realized, was the only feasible means of defeating Hannibal. For the next few years, Hannibal was forced to sustain a scorched earth policy and obtain local provisions for protracted and ineffectual operations. Carthaginian political will was embodied in the ruling oligarchy. Two political factions operated in Carthage, the War Party, also known as the Barsids, Hannibal's family name, and the Peace Party led by Hanno II the Great. In 212 BC, Marcellus conquered Syracuse and the Romans destroyed the Carthaginian army in Sicily. In 210 BC, the Romans entered into an alliance with the Aetolian League. Philip V of Macedon found himself under attack from several sides at once. In 210 BC, Hannibal inflicted a severe defeat at the Battle of Herdonia, modern Ordona, in Apulia. In 208 BC, he destroyed a Roman force engaged in the siege of Locri. But with the loss of Tarentum, his hold on South Italy was almost lost. Conclusion of the Second Punic War, 203-201 BC. In 203 BC, Hannibal was recalled from Italy by the war party in Carthage. Scipio and Carthage had worked out a peace plan, which was approved by Rome. But Carthage captured a stranded Roman fleet in the Gulf of Tunis and stripped it of supplies. Unlike most battles of the Second Punic War, at Zama, the Romans were superior in cavalry and the Carthaginians had the edge in the infantry. This Roman cavalry superiority was due to the betrayal of Massinissa, who had earlier assisted Carthage in Iberia but changed sides in 206 BC. At one point it seemed that Hannibal was on verge of victory, but Scipio rallied his men and his cavalry attacked Hannibal's rear. This two-pronged attack caused the Carthaginian formation to collapse. Hannibal was still only 46 at the conclusion of the Second Punic War in 201 BC and soon showed that he could be a statesman as well as a soldier. After an audit confirmed Carthage had the resources to pay the indemnity without increasing taxation, Hannibal initiated a reorganization of state finances. He passed a law stipulating the 104 be chosen by direct election rather than co-option. In 193 BC, tensions flared up between the Seleucids and Rome after a series of defeats in the Roman Seleucid War. Hannibal advised equipping a fleet and landing a body of troops in the south of Italy, offering to take command himself. Antiochus gave tacit support to Hannibal's plans of launching an anti-Roman coup d'état in Carthage. In 190 BC, Hannibal ordered his fleet to set sail along the southern Asia Minor coast in order to reinforce the rest of the Seleucid navy at Ephesus. The following month Hannibal's fleet clashed with the Rhodian navy in the Battle of Side. The ensuing Battle of Myonesis resulted in a Roman Rhodian victory which cemented Roman control over the Aegean Sea. Hannibal fled to Crete, but soon went back to Anatolia and fought for Prusia's Eye of Bithynia against King Eumenes II of Pergamon. The precise year and cause of Hannibal's death are unknown. Pausanias wrote that his death occurred after his finger was wounded by his drawn sword while mounting his horse, resulting in a fever, and then his death three days later. Appian writes that it was Prusia's who poisoned Hannibal. Plutarch and Pliny record that Hannibal's tomb was at Libyssa on the coast of the Sea of Marmara. 
Hannibal's military genius was not enough to disturb the Roman political process and the collective political and military capacity of the Roman people. The Romans refused to admit the possibility of defeat and rejected all overtures for peace. They even refused to accept the ransom of prisoners after Cannae. Hannibal is generally regarded as one of the best military strategists and tacticians of all time. The double envelopment at Cannae an enduring legacy of tactical brilliance. According to Appian, several years after the Second Punic War, Hannibal served as a political advisor in the Seleucid Kingdom and Scipio arrived there on a diplomatic mission from Rome. Military academies all over the world continue to study Hannibal's exploits, especially his victory at Cannae. Even the Roman chroniclers acknowledged Hannibal's supreme military leadership, writing that, he never required others to do what he could not and would not do himself. Hannibal caused great distress to many in Roman society. He became such a figure of terror that, whenever disaster struck, the Roman senators would exclaim, Hannibal ad portas, Hannibal is at the gates, to express their fear or anxiety. This famous Latin phrase became a common expression that is often still used when a client arrives through the door or when one is faced with calamity.